good afternoon good afternoon can you hear me hello can you hear me hello can you hear me hello can you hear me okay Uh, so uh, last class uh, uh, we are done with uh, the settlement and transaction thing how it happens in the market uh, now we need to come back to the you know, concept basic concept of uh, understanding the commodity markets especially in terms of derivative segments uh, which is related to commodities see uh, this is a old concept in fact it is not something which is uh, developed uh, newly the only thing is the methodology or how it is getting traded is right they have given some electronic touch to it that's it so now it is more of a standardized contracts which have come into place uh, these type of contracts we used to have earlier also but most of the time it was uh, only traded by uh, people who are in uh, trading that means to make it simple example if i am a cotton dealer and uh, i would uh, uh, deal with only cotton and cotton related uh, products that means uh, whatever the trade used to take place or uh, the commodity derivative type of transaction whatever used to take place earlier right uh, so it used to take place between the same class of people that is uh, traders or business people or someone like that so uh, they never entertained a common man so uh, they, it was a very difficult for a person who is not into trading or who is not into business to get into this habit of trading if he is interested so there was a, a gap there actually because common man was not given an opportunity to become a trader or an investor because this market was very much restricted to only few people uh, who normally used to come together in a informal way uh, basically it was like a forward types of contracts so they used to come and they need to go for an agreement and based on that agreement they used to settle the transactions or trade between those parties so uh, this type of things are happening okay for quite long so it it, it the days even goes back to uh, one second just hold on yeah yaar nodi idu idu kaala illa rendu so it goes back to still a uh, lot of uh, uh, old uh, years so it can be like uh, how to deal with this is very important so what i'm saying is uh, this type of uh, uh, things used to be in existence over a period of time and still the trade never used to take place at the right point of time so that's what uh, the important thing here needs to be understood is so when when we want to do the trading so the activity needs to be done in a systematic way uh, through either electronic mode or something like that so this has given opportunity not only for those people who are already into uh, dealing with trades but they are also those people who are interested also now they can join like uh, people like you and me if you are interested to participate in the market even though we don't have any knowledge about these products or commodities or whatever it is and we are not daily dealing with these commodities in our day to day life uh, except other than as a consumer so still we can also participate in this trade so there is nothing called as you should have so much experience or you should be knowing this particular uh, how to de- deal with this commodity or you should be part of either manufacturing or servicing or in the hand of processing 
such commodities so there is absolutely no qualification or no knowledge or no experience required today in order to get into trade okay so that is that is something which has changed or revolutionized uh, when the markets have started going uh, on digital platforms that is electronic otc we call it as right so electronic and uh, over the counter exchanges what is taking place uh, that is the features which has been added out now since okay so coming back to this uh, commodity markets so the we need to study now about uh, why derivatives so what made uh, the inventors in market to look for this type of derivatives when already there was a stock exchange which is already there so normally trading on stock exchanges goes by uh, dealing in the particular shares or debentures or on different types of stocks and all those things so when there was such type of contract in the uh, markets which are already existing uh, why this new segment of derivatives so why this type of uh, new segments were added and that too in that commodity derivative why it was added because derivatives can be in form of shares also okay uh, so what we will be discussing is only commodity derivatives we will not get into the share derivative part but uh, almost the exchanges work in the same platform uh, but uh, regulators are different so their uh, share market derivative is sebi here it is forward market commissions okay so i think uh, you know about that uh, we have discussed in detail about the role of the regulators in commodity markets and all those things so only thing is uh, now they have given a, a, a latest uh, touch to this market so that internationally the markets now have common features so even people who are uh, sitting outside india or the uh, foreign investors or the fii is what we call it as right even they are also uh, getting involved with uh, trading in our exchanges so that is that is the beauty of uh, today's uh, exchange so earlier uh, the trade was restricted only between their family members or between the business people who are doing the same line of business uh, but it never encouraged uh, outside people to enter into contracts so that uh, thing has changed over a period of time and uh, now we see that uh, even a uh, common man uh, who has a valid um, dmat account so they can participate in this uh, exchanges okay so uh, if you are registered with some uh, uh, recognized participants right you can just uh, participate in uh, share markets or in commodity markets or whatever it is so that is the brief uh, outcome of outline of this uh, particular thing so don't think that this is a concept which has come up newly only thing is they have given the new touch to it so that uh, uh the market becomes wider so it accepts now people from all backgrounds so people from all spheres of life and people from all over the world okay so they can now participate in this uh, trade transactions so that is the only thing which is there okay so don't uh, think in other than so why 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 this derivative segments why why you want to get into derivative segments because many people have uh, a common notion Uh, they feel that uh, playing in derivative market is risky so actually this is the other way around if you think the market of how the derivative works right it's not it's a risky market it is a market to cover risk actually okay so this is a market where uh, the buyers and sellers who are interested into uh, dealing with that type of commodities right so they can cover themselves with the future risk okay that we call it as hedge hedging right so uh, this is a right platform for them to cover their risk so i used to give an example always that uh, whenever uh, a farmer especially i am i'll be focusing more on farmer because uh, uh, they are the people who need to use this uh, um, uh, products uh, for their uh, covering of risk especially today i was watching television in the afternoon again i saw that one of the sugarcane farmer has destroyed all his sugar canes which has grown up in his farm just because uh, there was no proper price or there was no proper demand for the sugarcane what he has grown in his field see so much of effort so much of water so much of uh, 
uh, energy what he has invested right it has gone for a ta zero task now so why this happened so if you see and analyze the reason why this has happened then definitely one thing is sure that he did not think about the risk factors so risk is something which is uh, inevitable in the business and uh, i think uh, they the he should have taken some uh, if he, uh, he was aware of this particular uh, commodity markets and if he had taken some uh, uh, proactive measures by entering into a future commodity uh, contracts with someone uh, just he could have saved his uh, time and also he could have saved his money and uh, there was no need for him to destroy all the sugar cane which was grown so all his efforts has gone for a task so this is where i think uh, uh, this uh, derivative commodity products becomes very useful so in order to cover the risk okay and to understand the risk very important uh, it is important that uh, everyone should uh, think of putting money in derivative markets so normally what happens uh, in whenever we are talking about business right we come across two important types of risk one is um, operational risk and the other one is financial risk so this operation risk is something so this operational risk is something where uh, uh, the risk is due to losing adequate inadequate or failed internal processes okay people and system or something like that uh, where the risk arises because of uh, purely your operational activities okay so when you do your operational activities uh with your uh, man material labor and whatever you have so there are chances that mm. there may be a risk which may arise in the business so that may be one of the reason why this operational risk may arise it's purely because of running your business okay uh, this these are something which are in day to day activities where you are suffering this risk okay then coming back to the financial risk uh financial risk is something which is uh, due to your uh, financial uh, uh, planning okay uh, like interest rates and exchange rates or create financial risk for individual firms and all those things so it's basically because of what type of uh, uh, um, uh financial uh, investments used in business okay whether you use more of shares or more of debentures or more of external funds or what is the type of funds used in that business uh, they are called as financial risk so every business comes under this operational risk and financial risk operation risk is something within the organization which happens and financial risk is something which happens because of financial aspects so derivatives are products for managing financial risk okay so it is purely to address the financial matters so risk caused by insufficient fund or uh, inappropriate usage of funds or uh, mismanagement of funds or uh, having a wrong capital structure in business see these are the various uh, factors which will be the reason for uh, managing the financial risk so derivative is something which you need to use in order to manage the financial risk so coming back to this uh, risk analysis uh, we will not get into detail of this because it is nothing to do with financial management concept only thing you need to understand is risk is inevitable in uh, all businesses so you resort into such type of products in order to cover that risk okay or minimize the risk because mitigation of risk is highly impossible today so you cannot mitigate any risk today you can minimize it so that you suffer less loss so derivative is one product which will be addressing your financial risk especially in terms of uh, financial variables uh, like uh, interest rates or exchange rates or uh, credit risk uh, due, uh, due to uh, non operational of financial activities or obligations and all those things so in natural risk is very important please remember so any business to flourish needs to come out of risk factors so 
derivative is one product which will be helping you to cover this financial risk okay so there is a wrong uh, perception in the minds of lot of people where they see that where they tell that derivative is a risky no derivative is not risky okay derivative is not a risky products only thing is if you want to venture into any business right for that matter you should be cautious you should be having thorough knowledge you should have some basic ground work what you should have done in order to enter into any business for that matter if you don't do it then it's a risk only okay so but derivative comes in hand for you in order to cover the risk so if you plan it in proper way if you enter into an agreement in a proper form and have the underlying asset properly identified at the time of entering into contracts then definitely this can cover your risk but you need to know for this the entire cost and all those things so you should have some idea about the financial uh, model under which you are working with so unless and until you know this then um, it is very difficult for you to sustain by using derivatives so most people who whom i have seen or i have met who deal with this uh, derivative market says they lack awareness about the market itself so they don't know what the market is and how the market works and how the underlining of assets takes place so how the price gets fixed and uh, how the what are the instances under which the market is behaving or what will be the future of the market see you should do some more more to understand all these things unless you do it it will not be uh, a viable uh, um, what i call uh, business for you to venture into so if you are looking for to be a trader or an investor uh, better you should have some basic understanding so relying upon someone or uh, just uh, trusting some brokers or some uh, third parties or sub brokers or some intermediaries for that matter or looking at television or uh, reading some newspaper article or some websites and all those things putting money definitely it will be risky because you should also understand some of the things you should do some basic understanding of the subject so you need to know all those things before you venture into the market okay so other than that yes the risk is inevitable okay when you see all the financial products comes with that uh, disclaimer so even when you put the money in mutual funds also they t- say that mutual fund investments are subject to market risk please read the offer document before you invest so th- this type of disclaimer is there in all when you buy insurance also it is there any financial product for that matter when you buy right that disclaimer is there so uh, only thing is yes i should be aware of i should be having some some bit of knowledge about uh, how this things happen in the market so it's something where you need to have some efforts of your own where you invest some time of you yours to understand and uh, study the various segments under which the commodity markets works especially in derivative segment so i whenever i mention commodity markets i am referring to derivative segment of commodity markets okay so uh, having said about the risk factor Uh, uh this commodity derivatives uh, today i was uh, as i told you earlier uh, today this uh, commodity almost all commodities are covered under derivatives okay so earlier we used to have only some few commodities uh, especially gold and, and all the precious metal oil and all those things but some of the essential commodities were not there so today you see all the commodities okay so whatever you name right that those commodities are getting traded in the market today so there is a huge 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 uh, market for your commodities so government is also finding it very difficult to control the prices today because the market controls the prices today so government being a regulator of price mechanism in the system right it becomes its primary job to see that they want to uh, take care of the essential commodity pricing which is a very important uh, uh, from the point of uh, saving the interest of uh, poorest of the poor in the economy so since rice wheat oil all these products are getting changed right uh, sorry all these product getting are t- 
traded in market today somewhere down the line government is facing huge challenges especially in order to bring down the risk okay so uh, but uh, as last class i was telling about the price band and the circuit breakers and all those uh, concepts right so uh, those are the things which government resorts into and have because ultimately these commodity markets are all coming under the supervision of a regulator so who is a regulator regulator is again a legislative body which has been constituted under an act of parliament so there is a act which is been governing this regulating activities and the entire this commodity exchanges comes into that so the recent best example was about uh, the chinese investment when they made 10% of the stake in hdfc bank right immediately what government did government came up with a announcement saying that going forward all the investment and uh, uh, taking over of any stake in any companies in india should be not through direct mode it should be routed through government that means they are now restricting the movement of all the investments also so if you see today's newspaper even china japan has done that so japan has done for almost around 551 companies so whenever there is a investment from any foreigners in japanese company crossing more than 1% so they need to take the permission from the japanese finance minister now so there is no automatic approval route for any investments to take place in india or in any country in the world because taking this covid as an advantage these people should not uh try to start controlling or taking the stake in other companies across the globe so that uh, that should not happen that that's that's a national security issue actually if you ask me that's a national security issue so any nation doesn't want any other countries to take the advantage of this uh, covid situation and start taking the business and all those things and start envisaging control on it, domestic companies so the whole purpose of uh, the what you call it as a uh, uh, revival of domestic industries will be at a uh, what you call it, will be banging down if you allow such types of investment to come into india so uh, that's how government through regulations try to see that these type of things should not happen in commodity markets also they don't do it so today the commodity derivative markets in globe and includes both exchange traded and over the counter derivation contracts so over the counter is today forward contracts takes place at over the counter okay so uh, please remember futures are only exchange driven okay so there is nothing called as otc in case of uh, future contracts only its forwards where over the counter contracts happens because it's not a standardized contracts to go with so options are almost also a standardized contract because lot of regulations are there in option contracts and swap options swappings and all those things which comes under uh, different different category of derivative segments right they are also exchange traded only so okay, except for forward contracts especially which comes under otc the rest all comes under electronic exchange system itself so it consists of now wide range of segments like agriculture produce or base metal produce base metal things coal coal is one of the important thing commodity markets uh, and also commodity index products so those which has index which has been calculated from 2001 onwards and crude oil is also one of the thing which is coming and i think we have discussed enough on this emission uh even uh, gas oil and gas all those things plastic products and all these things comes under uh, now commodity markets okay so it's a wide area and a very vast area of uh, commodities are getting trade so only if you are having knowledge of that particular commodities and if you are keen in knowing and having interest in understanding that particular commodities their business and how the future looks like then only it is advisable for you to enter into trade in that commodities so just relying on some advices on television sets or through some intermediaries or through newspaper or some internet sources will not help you out 
so definitely there will be high chances of you losing money in this because they're all uh, standardized contracts okay so once you get committed with the contract you need to make sure so you need to honor the contract on that particular day so but there are other options okay so i'll not get into details of those things okay so there are ways wherein you can minimize your risk in market so there are various techniques if you really want to get into uh, the uh, uh, what do you call it? as a trader okay with the, uh, as a devolved trader i will call it a devolved trader uh, meaning that if you are 100% you want to put your efforts and want to be a serious trader in the market there are ways to minimize your risk okay there are something called as callers and all those things which you need to get into when you are entering into the market so through that you can minimize your risk okay so and you need to look at the portfolios based on which you need to invest in the market okay so that's different concept where where we can so what is derivative basically we have discussed so much we are talking about derivative 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 so much so as the name itself tells derive what do you mean by derive Uh, to derive means uh, to arrive at a price from something else so that is called as deriving so you if you want to derive something then there should be some base on which you are deriving making use of that and you are deriving at that so what is that base so that base is called as underlying asset here what is that underlying asset underlying asset can be anything it can be gold it can be oil it can be uh, agriculture some commodities we trace or whatever it is okay so that means you since this is a contract of futures you are our options options also may be there you are arriving at the price what that price will look like in, in future and you bet for that price today that is spot price looking at the spot price you bet for your derivative price so that derivative price if it is more than the market price prevailing on that particular day then you enjoy the benefit there so normally this trade one person will gain and another person will lose okay so the question of gain or lose is something different here because the percentage of gain or loss is very important here okay so gaining and losing is part of your business activity so here what happens either of the buyers can also make profits here so buyer or seller they both can gain from the transaction or both can lose from the transaction but if it is a day to day thing what is happening right mark to market we called it as right that there is a position where he may be gaining or the other person may be losing but when you take the whole contract for whole period of expiration right so definitely there is no gain or loss if the market is favoring to both the parties so that means if the farmer has agreed for selling a tomato for 10 rupees so on that particular day if the price of the tomato becomes 9 rupees so what happens if the farmer had not entered into derivative contract he would have lost 1 rupee because market is closing at 9 rupees but your contract value was at 10 rupees that means you made 1 rupee gain there but who is the loser loser is the person who is buying so seller will gain farmer will gain because he is getting 1 rupee extra on that day if he had sold it in market he should have sold it at 9 rupees now he is selling at 10 rupees so here what happens farmer is gaining but who is the loser loser is the person who has betted for 10 rupees that is seller so sorry buyer buyer is losing 1 rupee that means why is losing because if he has not entered into this contract and if he had bought that particular tomatoes from the market itself he could have bought it at 9 rupees but now he is buying it at 10 rupees so 1 rupee there is a loss so this loss and gain is something which fluctuates over a period of time but i don't think this 9 rupee 1 rupee is a loss because that person who has bought will not sell it immediately so normally who is the person who will be going for buying it they are the traders so what they do they buy the product at 
when the prices have gone down and they will sell it when the prices go up so they are the people who hold this commodities they store this in their warehouse okay so they buy it at a price when the market has come down and they try to sell it at price when the market goes up or they will only create temporary demand for the products in future and they will try to maximize the benefit in the long run so they have the capacity to withstand so they are the people who go, go into trade in derivative markets especially in commodity segments i am not talking about shares here i am talking about commodities okay so who are the people normally wholesalers retailers or any traders right they are the people who enter into contract here so the, they enter into contract with farmers here so or it can be an agency or it can be dealers also for that matter so as per the definition of uh, scra uh, scra is nothing but your uh, security contract and regulation act 1956 uh derivative is defined to mean a security derived from a debt instruments shares loans whether secured or unsecured risk instrument or contract for difference or any form of securities so here they are restricting only to securities but uh, now it is been applicable even to commodities also so it is the same concept under which both the works okay uh there it works on the basis underlying asset there also uh, we talk about their shares securities and uh, even gold there gold and silver and precious metals but here we are focusing on commodities also like oil oil seeds and all those things that is the only difference but how the pricing is done and how the uh, price discovery happens in the market and all those things again in both the cases it's almost same okay there is no much difference between shares and uh, commodity derivative only thing is in the aspect of regulatory norms why because commodities are directly influencing the common man but shares doesn't influence the common man so there there lies the difference so regulations are little bit uh, uh, what do you call stringent in case of commodity markets but it's not so in case of uh, uh, your uh, Uh, de- financial derivatives uh, like shares and all so that is the only difference which is there you need to understand so derivative contracts includes uh, forwards futures and uh, options and swaps okay these are the various products which are included in derivatives so coming back to the evolution i told about this evolution of uh, commodity is commodity is the first thing what people started exchanging with another before money was introduced so we know something called as barter system right so barter system where at that point of time people used to exchange commodity with another commodity depending upon the necessity okay so i was least bothered about uh, uh, the quality quantity quality and uh, other aspects volume and all those things so let us say i was in need of rice okay one bag of rice i want one bag of rice so i want to get that rice so i need to give it in return for that something so i used to give one sheep for that okay so i have excess sheep five sheep i had but i did not have rice another person who is there who has uh, no sheep but he has a good number of rice with him so what does that person give he will give one bag of rice to you because he has excess of rice with him and you have excess sheep with you so one sheep you give to him so this is what barter means no there is nothing to evaluate the value of each of the products there that means one sheep is equal to one bag of rice that's how they used to conclude so for me rice was important so i bought rice by giving sheep surrendering or exchanging sheep so this is what the contract was so many times uh, this used to happen many precious metals were given just to take some small uh, uh, portion of what i did not have so this resulted in lot of conflicts so there was no standardized base which was set and uh, uh, two different people in the same uh, type of contracts at two different point of time they used to exchange with different different things so there was nothing called a standardized 
uh, acceptance principle so there was lot of conflicts uh, fights which used to happen so finally they tried to find out a solution by inventing some paper currency and all those things so initially they did it with uh, coins then came the paper currency and all those things so coins came because of that so they started fixing some monetary value so we can see still that sometimes the commodities are today even today in lot of tribal areas they exchange this commodity for commodity still they don't use legal tender money as a medium of exchange so going forward still we are going backward again uh, the concept of bitcoins okay i think uh, there was a recent judgment from supreme court on the bitcoins whenever you get a time please go and read a judgment given by supreme court it's a very 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 interesting judgment it has questioned the basic law of the land itself so all these years we were thinking that rbi has all the powers but the way the judgment has been given by supreme court clearly exposes that rbi has not properly led before calling it as a, not a legal tender money okay so there is a contradictions in uh, which are, which the uh, 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 supreme court has found in the functioning of rbi and its act itself okay so now again we are going back to the old principles of exchange where your bitcoins or cryptocurrencies will be used as a medium of exchange and which is already in practice in lot of european countries and us and all those countries already accept bitcoins or cryptocurrency as a medium of exchange so in india also this ruling of supreme court has come as an eye opener and also now it has become a very big challenge for reserve bank of india how to address this bitcoin related issues so last time when the recession took place in 2008 there was lot of issue about this um, stock market plunging up so there is also this bitcoin which is getting entered into the market okay in the indirect route so we need to be very careful now uh, because when globe is accepting we cannot say no because we operate across the globe today so whatever the world says we need to accept it so most of the countries have accepted bitcoins as a medium of exchange so india saying no will not help you and out of five um important provisions which has been there in reserve bank of india i'll not get into all those important things because i just want to create some interest in you so that you go back whenever you find time and uh, read the supreme court judgment on bitcoins especially the findings what it has done very beautiful findings very important findings what it has come out there they have clearly told out of the five points what the rbi stands for four points are met through bitcoins only one is not there that is legal tender other than that whatever the money satisfies right bitcoins also satisfies so the, now there is now again rbi needs to revisit or relook into the act and now if that provision is not there they need to incorporate those provisions to say that we will not accept bitcoins as legal tender so we will not go into a judgment and all those things i just wanted to create interest in you why because again we are going back to bitcoins uh, where we are not using money as a exchange okay so there will be equivalent points which will be given which can be used as an exchange in future so money again is getting replaced with this cryptocurrencies now okay so this is something which is a new development which is taking place so evolution of commodities i as i told you this started from right long back but later on when the advancement of uh, business took place and when the business community started identifying themselves with the uh, different communities then what happened they formed a cartel or association or groups and they used to do trading among themselves so they did not any, uh, allow any outsiders who are not doing any business to come and do business with them so that is one thing which uh, which happening for quite long time even before this bombay stock exchange was started right this was a thing which was practically going on in lot of uh, areas of surat vadodara 
and uh, the bombay regions the old bombay prince state of bombay what i'm talking about before independence so this used to take place because it was a hub okay it was a hub for all business activities uh, as it is now it is called as uh, uh, the capital of uh, business right business capital is mumbai so uh, it, it's age old thing ahmedabad all these people places are known for trade so this is where the trading initially started with and that time it was only restricted to their family business or only the trader communities as we call it as those who are registered as trader so uh, going forward then things change uh, slowly uh, china was one of the country which we come to know that uh, they were the first country to uh, uh, introduce rice futures so, okay they were the first country to introduce rice futures in the market so before they the farmer used to grow rice they used to come up with fixing the price for it so they were the first people to start with that innovation then forward agreement uh, related to rice market uh, in 17th century was started in japan so then uh, from china it moved on to japan the first exchange for trading in derivatives appeared to be royal exchange in london so that was the first uh, 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 exchange which was set up for trading in derivative segments so there they opened the doors for forward exchange contracts okay so forward exchange contract again it is a otc type of contract where agreements used to take place on stamp paper and used to write something on the stamp paper both the parties used to sit agree for the terms and condition they used to exchange the contract but one of the biggest problem with that type of contracts was uh, credit risk so on the day of the contract uh, it was very difficult to find because the person who thinks that he will lose if he honor the contract right they then they never used to uh, honor the contract on that particular day because why i should lose instead of that i better i'll sell it in the market where i can make gains why i should uh, uh, give it to that person so somewhere the trust was breached so whatever the forward contract agreement was entered into it was a more of a informal agreements no standardized form of agreements that was so that resulted in what uh, we call it as uh, the uh, uh, the uh, not honoring the contract on that particular day so there was a huge credit risk so only option left to you is go to the court of law file a civil case against that person and that case used to drag for 5 years 10 years so that means this forward contract somewhere uh, did not enjoy the uh, what i call uh, the regulatory framework under which the contract should operate so that 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 was that was there was a need then okay they they thought of why don't we introduce some new things in the system and that is how the option contracts were legalized at that point of time okay and even forwards are also now entered through an optional way where it can be honored on that particular day if you want or if you don't want don't honor the contract so it's legal now it's 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 a legal way of honoring the contracts so they give you an option okay option to either honor the contract on that particular day or don't honor the contract on that particular day. so only thing is you will lose okay some uh, money which you are supposed to give it at the time of entering into the contract so that is the only thing what you do that that is called as margin money so you will lose that so the person who doesn't get on the contract he will get that money so there is no uh, problem with uh, both the parties entering into the contract so that is how the first uh, future contract uh, was go back to rice market in japan around 1650 this was the first uh, future contract was entered there the history of future markets are uh, concerned uh, was the creation of uh, chicago board of trade in 1848 so this is where the formal uh, exchange based trading started taking place chicago board of trade which was set up in 1848 a group of traders created the two ri contracts which Perm, uh, permitted farmers to lock in the price and deliver the grains later so this is a pure future contracts which uh, was formulated with necessary conditions and terms entangled into it okay that's very important 
these contracts were eventually standardized around 1865 and in 1925 the first future clearing house was formed so first clearing house future was formed clearing house future means what clearing house is a agency or a separate agents who work as clearing house agents so they make the trade to happen with asl free so that was started in 1925 so that was the biggest revolution which, which took place in the commodity markets or derivative markets we can call it as the earlier 20th century was a dark period of derivative trading as bucket shops were rampant in 1922 the federal government made its efforts to regulate the future markets with the grain future act so now they started giving some regulatory things and they wanted to bring some statutory backups okay in order to make uh, tougher rules to people to trade in derivative segments so in 1936 options on futures were banned in the us so due to that process they banned these options and futures then the year 1973 marked the creation of both chicago board option 16 and the publication of perhaps the most famous formula in finance the option pricing method so this method was uh, uh, by black scholes model okay if you go back and rem remember the uh, pricing price discovery methods of how to price a shares in the risk free transaction and risky transaction right so one thing which uh, comes into mind is black scholes model so that was the first time they appro uh, applied this 1973 was the first time they applied this black scholes model because uh, that, that 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 was one of the ways to estimate the future risk so now all these days it was highly difficult for fixing what your risk would be in the markets so now there was one method which was developed or a formula which was developed under blacks and scholes these are the two people okay one is black and other one is scholes these two people came up with one approach called as black scholes model which tried to find out the price for risk okay so considering the risk what should be the price so this is what the black scholes model taught about and uh, in 1970 this was introduced in 1980 marked the beginning of the era of swaps and other otc derivatives so swaps was something which was introduced especially in transaction relating to foreign currency because we see a lot of trade taking place internationally today so definitely there are people who are sitting in other countries also will be interested to gain due to the variation in foreign exchanges so that i'll come to it later because uh, this particular subject is not about uh, swaps and all we are focusing only on commodity derivatives okay so what all is involved in commodity i will be just talking about this as of today commodity swaps are also there but it's not so vibrant in india so but uh, currency swaps and interest rate swaps are there in india which are very vibrant because of uh, the strong uh, Uh, the currency of indian rupees which we have today i think uh, that is one thing that, that is one of the reason why this particular exchanges are dealing with that now so then uh, while some minor changes occurred in the way in which derivatives were sold most uh, firms simply instituted tighter controls and continue to use derivatives so coming back to the a uh, bucket shop i was talking about right uh, there was something i mentioned about bucket shop uh, bucket shops were rampant bucket shops are nothing but uh, uh, fraud or fraudulent brokerage because at that point of time there was no regulation on the activities of the brokers okay so they used to be very aggressive in their sales through so, uh, those days uh, most of the transaction used to take place through telephone exchange and over the counter and uh, they used to go to the exchange and physically they used to book the orders and all those things so that resulted in bucket shops okay which is small small uh, shops which gets created and uh, due to which uh, the regular regulation of the entire markets became very difficult because of broker being unorganized 
okay so they wanted to get rid of all these things and uh, securities they sell are typically poor investment opportunities and uh, almost always penny stocks we call it as uh, they used to do it <coughs> so it was basically to regulate the brokers that was done so history of derivatives in india <coughs> the history of organized commodity derivative in india goes back to the 19th century that is the time when things changed or as i was telling you that there was a market already existing but it was more of informal way <coughs> organized trading in commodity derivative was initiated in india with the setup of bombay cotton trade association in 1875 so here the name cotton trade they have told right so this market was only for cotton traders okay so people from surat or people from gujarat and ahmedabad and bombay area so where the cotton used to be grown in abundance right there the people who used to come and do this trading on cotton so next was gujarati vyapari mandali was set up in 1900 to carry futures trading in groundnut castor seed and cotton so as i told you these are the two areas where most of the things came for our business community gujarat and maharashtra these are the two states uh, especially few regions were there okay and trade used to come from only majority of the trade used to come from only those regions wheat in uh, hapur that is 1913 raw jute and jute goods in calcutta 1919 and oil seeds in bombay and bullion in 1920 so this is how the pe- time period in which various commodities started coming into india then uh, speculation was something which was uh, started so with a view to restricting speculative activities in cotton market the government of bombay prohibited options buying in cotton in 1939 so option was uh, limited actually it was prohibited so that means the only trade community was allowed to get into that but other than trade community the, any speculators who want to enter into the market was restricted okay they were not allowed to do it because there was no act as such which was governing that uh, that's the time when scra was set up okay security control regulatory act was there right so that that security contract that is forward contract regulatory authority so the, when that came everything changed actually So in 1943, forward trading was prohibited in oil seeds and uh, some other commodities, uh, including food grains, spices, vegetable oils, and sugars. And uh, then Parliament passed the FCRA Act, Foreign uh, Con- for Forward Contract Regulation Act, 1952, and the Act applies to goods which are defined to any movable property other than security, currency, and auctionable claims. so this is the first time they have defined what are the commodity what do you mean by commodity so commodity does not include securities currency and optionable claims so no point in studying about uh, swaps and all here that's why i told you because that is something to do with currencies currency fluctuation and all those things and also actionable claims we don't study here and securities because there is a different market for that stocks stock market is there there we talk about securities here it's only commodity markets where we focus more on commodities so i'll continue this in the next class okay so hope uh, the concepts are getting cleared for you because uh, this is something where basic understanding of the market and terminologies are very important for you to understand this uh, commodity market subject okay any questions you can ask me now if you have any questions please ask So, any questions? Please ask. Okay, fine. So, if you understood, it's good. So, if you have any questions, you can write to me or uh, send it across to me. Okay. so these videos will be available you can still uh, see the videos again and again refresh it so that you will get to know about some of the concept if you are not able to understand 
initial. Okay, thank you. I'll send the link tomorrow or day after. I'll just let you know. So, what will be the timings of my next class? Okay. So, this is the last chapter. I I think another three uh, hours is enough for me to complete this, this chapter. So, we'll uh, complete it as soon as possible so that you get ample time to do your project and all those things. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your patience listening. Bye.